This past Friday, we took a look at a 1920s era cocktail, eh, I guess Prohibition era cocktail, called the Silk Stocking, which was a very fascinating combination of ingredients that felt just, just, just a hair, a hair poorly executed. Though it is tasty and a very approachable cocktail, I wanted to take this drink right here and bring it into the modern age with some new and interesting technique, which we're going to talk about on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Roll the intro! I can't get enough of saying that. I really and truthfully cannot get enough of saying, roll the intro. I just love that sentence so much. Hey there, Heather Hother, my name is Michael. I am a private events bartender, currently available for hire and a home mixologist. And today we're gonna go ahead and talk about the silk stocking, but in a sort of 2.0 version today. I had mentioned very briefly uh, in last Friday's episode that the silk stocking is effective. It's a delicious sort of mock-up cocktail version of a really kind of like a strawberry a strawberry milkshake and it tastes really really great but there's kind of a weird separation between the ingredients and something that i like to break down uh step by step so let's let's pull everything that we used in this up and go over why i think it needs some changing i'm also gonna set that cocktail aside because i don't need i don't need any more tequila at 2 45 in the afternoon <laughs> So a silk stocking isn't a particularly cock, you know, complicated cocktail, but it does include four very fascinating ingredients that you wouldn't expect to be side by side the way that they are right now. You have Blanco tequila, specifically unaged tequila or tequila that I think has spent less than three months on oak. I think is that that's the requirement. Very sharp, very vegetal, very peppery, very fascinating combined with everything else you see in front of you, but not exactly the best flavor companion. Next to that we have Palma, which was my substitute for uh, Rose's Grenadine because I kind of wanted to embrace the flavor of pomegranate more effectively. It worked really well in the context with the chocolate and the tequila and the cream. It was sort of the thing pulling everything together, but it's still a very kind of dark, savory berry flavor, and it doesn't quite scratch the same edge as something like a strawberry chocolate vibe would. Next up was creme de cacao, uh, you know, just a basic, chocolate flavored liqueur, very sweet. And I mean, it's fine, but it's not very potent or or rich in flavor. It's very just boilerplate simple. And then heavy cream, which was, I mean, it's heavy cream. It's just the base for the rest of the ingredients to play off of, but I think it can still be elevated. So here's my plan for each and every one of these ingredients. To start, we need a new base spirit. I'm gonna stick with tequila because I like the idea of embracing it. So I'm gonna do something a little home brewed. This is a strawberry infused tequila I made using a thousand grams of strawberries uh, and 250 mLs of tequila. You can actually watch me make it in a vertical phone video I recorded for TikTok that is up on this channel by this point uh, by watching the link up here. It's very strongly berry forward with the sort of acidity of those, those strawberry flavors, but it is still smooth and embracing the flavor of the tequila, just kind of muting it a little bit, letting it be in the background, smoothing it out and providing a companion berry flavor to our palma. And our palma, we're actually going to keep the same. I'm not going to do anything with this or change it around at all, but I do, think it needs to be rebalanced because we're gonna build the cocktail differently. And this is the reason why we're doing it. We're gonna build the cocktail differently because we have to use a different amount of palma to make this combo work well. Creme de cacao is effective, it's a good sweetener, um, but I don't think it has a place here. I'm gonna go ahead and do instead a combination of chocolate and coffee bitters. Chocolate and coffee are relatively close flavors to begin with. They're actually kind of connected in the sense that if you ever have a nice, you know, slow, carefully brewed cup of coffee, you could pull things like chocolate, dark chocolate, raw coffee bean out of those flavors. And because they're so similar and pair very, very well with both strawberry and pomegranate, as we found out in last week's episode, um, we're gonna go ahead and embrace those instead because they're gonna be more potent, more lively, more diverse, and they're gonna show a little bit clearer. Now I wanted to keep the cream component relatively the same, but because we're building the cocktail differently, and to be clear, I'm stirring it rather than shaking it this time, you can't, you can't really make a stirred cocktail with cream. You're supposed to shake it. But rather than actually put it into the cocktail, I'm going to combine it with some simple syrup 
And instead, we're gonna go ahead and make our own whipped cream float, or I guess a sweet cream float at that point. I'm super excited. I think that this is a really, really interesting variation on the platform, and I want to, I want to, I want to give it a shot. I've done it once before. It was a little bit rough on the technique, but I've got it down now, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our silk stocking 2.0, made with all this stuff right now. Okay, so we need to build this cocktail differently than we did before. So we have to take a couple of different steps and we're gonna start by shaking out the base for the cocktail on which we're going to do our sweet cream float. To begin, it's gonna start with one to two dashes of a coffee bitters. I am using uh, Australian Bitters Company coffee bitters. I have no preference for this, it's just what I found at the store. I'm gonna come behind that with two to three dashes of Angostura cocoa bitters. There are other chocolate flavored bitters out there. Um, Angostura, it just has kind of a corner on the market for stuff like this, so that's what I went with. The dark chocolate essence of, of Angostura cocoa is so remarkably close to miso, it's very fascinating to me. I, I need to look into that and do something with that because, oh my God, it's, it smells divine. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we're going to need our pama, the reason why we are deciding to stir this um, instead of shake it. Uh, and we're going to need one full ounce of pomegranate liqueur. De Kuiper also makes a pomegranate liqueur. It won't be the same as this. This has a sort of touch of tequila agave flavor in it that we are looking for as a complement to our base spirit. Um, you could sub them out, but don't expect it to be exactly the same. And then finally, our special ingredient, our strawberry tequila. Um, I went for a strawberry tequila because I wanted to reinforce the berry flavors of the palma uh, with a companion flavor that would more closely and comfortably play off of the chocolate flavors. You know, strawberry, chocolate, pomegranate, chocolate, both work, but if you combine them, you get a full bouquet of berry flavor. We're gonna do two ounces of our strawberry infused tequila. And that is actually the full content of our base, which I don't want to ice and stir just yet because we have to get started on our sweet cream. We're gonna set this off to the side just for the time being. We're gonna grab a cocktail shaker. Into that cocktail shaker, we're gonna go ahead and place one or rather half an ounce of a simple syrup. And this is a double syrup, so two parts sugar to one part water. And we'll come behind that with a full ounce of our heavy whipping cream. Doesn't seem like a lot, but remember that cream is going to expand as we shake it and aerate it and turn it into a foam that will float on top of the cocktail. Even though it's a small amount, you kind of want that. If you overdo it, you're gonna have to shake it really hard with a lot of extra agitation in order to accomplish the same foam that we're looking for. We just need to sort of dry agitate the cream. So I'm just gonna cap that up, set that aside, get that ready to go. <laughs> to our sort of Manhattan tequila berry Manhattan base style thing I'm doing. Uh, we're gonna do two cracked cubes of ice because we want some extra surface area for extra dilution. So everything iced down and uh, our cocktail shaker, ready to go. I'm gonna make sure that's nice and sealed. It is. We're gonna go ahead and do a thing that I always fuck up. Uh, we're gonna stir a cocktail and shake at the same time. Stirring for about 15 seconds and shaking for about twice as much. So we're gonna set our uh, foam off to the side. There's no water or ice or anything in there, so it's gonna stay the way it is now. I'm gonna grab a rocks glass right here, these custom ones with my name on them, which is uh, fucking cool. We're gonna serve this over uh, a single large rock. Don't mind that I left the freezer open. I'm gonna grab a Hawthorne strainer and just drop that right on in. Then we're gonna take our sweet cream. We're gonna go ahead and float this hopefully on top. <laughs> Best way to make sure you're doing that correctly is to hit the ice and do so off of a spoon so that they layer appropriately. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. Come on. You cocksucker, God damn it. Okay, well, apparently this wasn't frothed enough. Damn it. I will be right back. Okay. So, back, we're back. I've got a new drink, ready made, really made. And now I've doubled the proportion in here and shaken it with a large rock for agitation and dilution. There's a little bit of wiggle room uh, and a spring, but you know what, in fact, I don't even, I don't even know what. Okay, 
Now I'm confident that we got it. Now, now I'm com- now- I'm not confident, but I got it. Okay, we're gonna take our spoon. We're just gonna float that. <gasps> yes! <laughs> Suck my dick, physics! Woo! I'm working on a little camera battery now, so I gotta- I gotta make this quick. Um, clearly I have overfilled it, so allow me to clean my set real quick. Another technical difficulty slide coming right up! Okay, so now we're actually back. We need to finish this off with a garnish. One that I swear I have more, more properly planned. We're gonna grab our cutting board here and another fresh strawberry. Uh, we're gonna hit this with some cinnamon along one of the sides and a fresh strawberry. So, just like so, we're gonna hit that with the cinnamon. What a good, good firm stripe on there. You take a strawberry, place a nice diagonal cut in it and place it on the corner of your glass like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my revival of a uh, silk stocking. One that is layered and in, in weird and fun. All right, we've cleaned up our station as best as I can. Sweet foam as it turns out, very difficult to clean. <laughs> this is our new silk stocking. Uh, a very interesting layered and sort of swirling nebula of boozy liquid that I'm very excited to drink. <laughs> Cheers. Oh man, yes. Chiefly, it is now very strawberry forward, which is a much more friendly flavor, I think, than pomegranate. I think people expect pomegranates to be sweeter or more berry-like than they are, when really they're actually quite savory. And as a result, they're kind of difficult to get behind. Strawberry is a lot more approachable. It's a lot lighter. It brings some brightness and acidity to the cocktail that otherwise was missing, uh, while also pulling back on some of those tequila notes, but allowing them to still be noticeable. They're not as sharp or uh, untamed as a straight up Blanco tequila would be. The base underneath with this pomegranate strawberry combo is very, very fresh, bracing, enjoyable berry. And at the end, towards the end, those bitters come through this coffee, and chocolate darkness and depth is kind of in the back and it's the back of your tongue, your back palate. And it kind of comes up and it brings this nice moderating and friendly, welcoming dark chocolate bitterness to it that I think is missing from a lot of applications of chocolate in cocktails. It's, it's really, really fascinating, really, really just pleasant to sip upon. And then that sweet foam on top is, you know, obviously providing us a little bit of extra body. It's providing a nice airy texture to it, especially at the forefront. Um, that cinnamon on the top is sort of laying into and doubling down on that. It's giving it this very nice, open, sweet, welcoming vanilla adjacent flavor that was sort of missing from uh, the original version, which by the way, I, I technically have dying in the window over here. Um, let's do a quick AB before my camera dies. Not bad, sharp tequila flavor, strong berry, chocolate notes going back and forth. Cinnamon is playing off that as a nice way to balance on the nose. What about my version? More smooth, more silky even, because uh, of that sweet foam. Got this nice brightness to it, this sort of tartness that is, that is not present in the original that I wish was. Um, a very different, more full, berry flavor that's less specific than it is in the original Silk Stocking, but more pleasant and welcome and inviting. And that, of course, that nice long extended evolution that is bringing chocolate and coffee along with it at the very end of this berry, when that flavor of that berry dies out, oh, coffee, chocolate, so good. <laughs> Well, that is it for today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. I'm sorry it was a shit show, but then again, when aren't the Tuesday episodes? Kind of the whole point of doing a dumb Tuesday upload that's hopefully shorter and quicker to edit. Didn't think about that. We're gonna go ahead and read another uh, entry from Chris Toasts, and I need to do this quick before my camera dies, because my God, I'm getting real close. We're still in the accountant section of Chris Toasts, but we are at the last entry, which goes as such. Two accountants, the people who really know the score in business. Damn straight. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know I enjoyed making it. It was a shit show, but it was a lot of fun. Um, if you did enjoy it, go ahead and click that like button down below and subscribe to catch more episodes of the show. I make them every single week, uh, every day on Friday, and then sometimes, like today, on Tuesday. You can follow me on the socials that have either appeared on the screen already or are appearing now or whatever, uh, and watch more videos. They keep popping up at the top 
you know, right hand corner of the screen for you, top left up here for me. And watch them, they're fun. I make a lot of videos and I hope you guys enjoy all of them. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. I will see you all in the next episode. I'm gonna leave those there though, cause I'm, 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 I'm set, I'm good. Delicious, but I'm good. Peace.